whenever you're ready. Oh my god. <laughs> Jessica! I've never been called a fox! <laughs> Dana. That's a classy name for a Harry. I like it classic. Okay. Do you? <laughs> Welcome to the Rants and Raves podcast. Sure. Out with the bad and in with the good, motherfuckers. That's right. Jessica. Dana. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Welcome to the Rants and Raves podcast. I am Dana Powell. I'm Jessica Young. And, and we, we are, are here, here to rant, rant and rave. rave. Hmm. Hmm. Not much body movement. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, no. how you doing? I'm fine. We're having a bit of a rough week. We are. That's all right. We'll get through it. We are indeed. Yeah, we'll get through it. Yes. I will say I love having this to do and to and to work on, like even if I'm up late editing or whatever, I'm always giggling mm. and I'm always so inspired by the stories that we share. Totally. So even though today, I think for both of us, <laughs> how long have we been here trying to get this thing recorded? <laughs> <laughs> I've only been here for three hours, oh, but that's okay, pretty great. par for the cars. So we're just starting recording. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then my son came home and I had to cutesy on him. Mm, and, he's the cutest. Yeah. But anyway, I'm grateful to have you here. Uh, thank you. Honestly, I show. got my uh, free therapy session in this morning with you, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Good. But, I think it was mutual. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Seriously, though, we've said it many times, but I mean it. It's. This is something that I, I don't know. It's a bright I spot. Hope it, people enjoy it as much as I enjoy you. I know. I know. <laughs> me too. Same. Same Z's. Yeah. I guess we should tell people how to contact us. Sure. I'm going to try and do it by memory. Do it. Okay. All right, y'all. First of all, I do want to thank you guys. Mm-hmm. Thank our listeners because we put the call out for Rants and Raves mm-hmm. and people deliver. Mm-hmm. So we appreciate that Keep so much. Coming. Keep it coming. We you- got a lot of stuff this week. Yes. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you, thank you, thank you. And it also helps us know, oh, okay, somebody's still listening. <laughs> <laughs> you can contact us on Instagram and Facebook at the Rants and Raves podcast. You can find us on Twitter at raves underscore the. You can straight up email us at the Rants and Raves podcast at gmail.com. Or you can go to our website, the Rants and Raves podcast dot com yeah there's a contact us button on there you can hit it and Mm -hmm. it'll send you right to us do it it was a little a little jerky but i made it through you did (laughs) great job jessica how was your week it was fun the oscars always something i enjoy watching Mm -hmm. i don't you i know don't like to watch watch award shows i do like seeing it and mainly for real i like to see if there's a song performed or an interpretive dance. I always go dance. back and watch the highlights, all that kind of uh-huh. stuff. Yeah. I always want to see the fashion. I do. Uh-huh. Like, and this year I have to say it was pretty on, I mean, people were really good this year. I loved that Natalie Portman had uh, female directors. Amazing. Embroidered, embroidered on her in cape. Her cape mm-hmm. That were not nominated. Yes. And she looked should have been. stunning. Yeah. She's all grown up now. Uh-huh. How about <laughs> Billy Porter? Beyond. Beyond. I want that golden feather <laughs> owl m- from Minerva, winged, whatever, Athena. Winged goddess he was. <laughs> I got to be honest. I Ever since the lampshade hat, I'm, I've gone to his yeah. Instagram and I just scroll through. Like, he plays dress up. He full blown yes. wears gold lame dresses. Yes. Did you see his purse? Was it at the Oscars or or the I don't know which award. It's such award season right mm-hmm. now. But in one of them, he had a purse that mm-hmm. said "Fuck you, pay me." <laughs> <laughs> He's also dare I say because he was also there for the Oscars. He rivals Sir Elton John now with the glasses. With the glasses. He wears. There was a picture of him talking to Elton John, and it was really sweet. Oh you could God, tell he was amazing. just so enamored. Yeah, He cracks me up, man. He just doesn't care. I also like love someone who, again, is not being arrogant or doing something to harm others. No. When somebody is that confident in themselves, and they're like, I don't care if you like it or not. I'll tell you what. He just made a post. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. He made a post today that talked about his journey and how blessed he is right mm-hmm. now and how 
the last three years have just blown him away mm -hmm. because he talked about how he d couldn't get on Broadway for 13 years. And like, then he won the damn Tony. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's aware of where he came from. Yeah. And even though he may come off as arrogant, he's just enjoying the fruits of his hard work. And I say, go for it. Yes. And like most people in entertainment, and this could also even go for other fields, I guess, you go at something for years and years and years and years, just mm -hmm. like athletes look for their two minute big break to make the Olympic trials, if that's their thing. Yeah. Or to get the job that finally opens the door to others as an actor, or director, totally. producer, whatever. So I have, that's what I'm saying. Like, He's got, I don't know how old he is, but he's not 20. No. He still has plenty of life to live, but he's been, I guarantee you, grinding away for at least 20 years. Oh, for sure. At least. Yeah, yeah. So I'm all, I'm here for it. Yeah. A little hometown <laughs> pride shout out for me, Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. He's from Springfield, Missouri. Mm -hmm. So congratulations, The man sir. that looks better as he ages. Oh, good Lord. It's not fair. It's not he okay. Gets handsomer and handsomer yes. with every year. The only thing that I, because he is the one that initially Dan tipped him was like, Brad Pitt makes me realize that God plays favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I think most men do recognize that he's a beautiful he's man. He's a beautiful, beautiful man. <laughs> the only thing I take solace in, in saying like, it's so not fair is that we've talked about this before mm. that he's like stinky. <laughs> like he is a farter and when he was young, like smelled like BO all the time, like supernatural. Oh like God. I knew oh somebody that went to high school with him. Hilarious. And she was like, Oh yeah, he stunk all the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing I'm like, if there's one thing I can hold on to that makes him normal. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what? I'll take it. Yeah. And yeah. Put some Vicks Vapo rub under my nostrils. <laughs> oh, Jessica! I'll take it. <laughs> Oh boy, I hope Alan doesn't listen to this okay. <laughs> episode. I also really love that Parasite won. I I truly, haven't seen it yet. I'm so I'm it. angry. I have it in my home and I have for months and I still haven't seen it. I've just been so busy. When I saw it, even though I hadn't and I did see almost every single film this year, I still have to see 1917. Oh, I saw that all one. of the big ones other than that. I the minute I saw it, I'm like, this is the best movie of the year. And people are like, have you seen all of them? I'm like, no, but this was the best movie I've seen in years. Yeah. So I know it's the best movie of the year. I can't wait to see it. It's incredible. Did 1917 win a cinematography award? I don't know. I feel like they... look. Because if they didn't... Sound editing, mixing. Well, that's maybe. good too, but the cinematography <laughs> was mind-blowing. Oh, you saw it? Uh-huh. In the theater? No. Oh, you saw it at home? Uh-huh. That's one movie a friend was like, please go see it. In the I know. Theater. I told Dan Tipton he hasn't seen it yet. And I said I would go to the mm -hmm. theater to see it with him. I don't know if it's still there. Probably not. But Maybe. Sometimes after the nominations, they extend they them. They extend them. Yeah. And I also I say this every year and I really do. Thanks to Netflix now, you're able to see a lot of them. I always want to see the shorts, mm -hmm. both live action and, and animated. Animated. I want to see the documentaries that are nominated. Mm -hmm. I love the one that's about girls learning to skateboard in a war zone. Mm hmm I, I want to see all of the hair love, the animated short that yes. one I know went viral and that was awesome. Yeah. So yeah, it's really cool to look at the things that are not on mainstream television or theater screens. Yes, for sure. And get to go check those out because yeah. there's amazing stuff being made around the world as we Hollywood. I met someone this weekend that is LA famous. Oh. So I did Mending Kids mm -hmm. Gala this mm -hmm. weekend. And to those of you who donated, who reached out and let us know, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so, so much. We got a nice story from a listener mm -hmm. and it was a magical night. It really was. And totally. The person that I met, do you know who Dorothy Lucy is? I know that name, but I so can't she was a it. she was like the entertainment reporter on Good Day LA for okay, a long yes. time, and she's got a podcast yes. called OK LA with Dorothy mm -hmm. Dorothy Lucy, I think. Anyway, she is a chair member for Mending Kids and has been involved with them for a long, long time. Oh, wow. So I got to introduce her that night, and she was just so lovely. And then she went on my Instagram and was like, "You made me 
laugh. You made me cry. I needed Aww. popcorn. I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, she was like, let's go on a mission together or at least get drinks. I was like, let's do both. Oh, yeah. Because so, I've been talking with them a little bit about possibly going on a yes. mission. And her speech was one of the, and I started crying early in the I'm evening. Sure. But she said, every table here tonight is saving two children's lives. Oh, wow. And so it was just like, wow. <laughs> and that That's was. That's amazing. When that you was, put it in that kind of perspective. In those terms, yeah. And that was literally just buying seats. Right. So there was a live auction. There was mm -hmm. flat out donations. They auctioned off two dogs, top notch Amazing. trained for your family dogs. Like they come in, interview your family, see what pets you have, see what area. <sighs> I mean, top wow. notch. And they had moose there as an example, the beautiful German Aww. shepherd. And he had on like superhero goggles for a little while, which was so <laughs> cool. But it did they're give me. They're called doggles. No, they're not. I'm not making that Jessica. up or making a pun. I promise they're called doggles. Goggles. I don't My trust friend has you. Them. I don't trust you with your <laughs> pun love. <laughs> But I'll tell you, I had a little bit of PTSD when he had the dog start barking and somebody came out in a suit on the dance floor to show. Because of the shepherd that chased you down because in Modern, of the modern family. family. Yes. <laughs> as soon as he started barking, I felt my body go, oh, <laughs> just since memory. And you didn't have a padded suit on. You no. had a fancy a cocktail dress. dress. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> So anyway, it was a magical evening. Oh, I love that. And I even love the pictures you had of the setup. Like I get emotional even just hearing like people do their sound check and stuff. Oh my gosh. I, so I got there early for a sound check mm -hmm. and Chapel Heart that was warming up. Mm -hmm. Holy cow, you guys. I told them, I was like, I am a lifelong fan <laughs> now. You girls are plucking at my heartstrings. I'm from Missouri because it's these three, it's two sisters and a cousin. Oh. They're African-American and they can sang. Wow. And they sing country. Love it. They sound like the Dixie Chicks to me, like wow. that kind of just uh -huh. beautiful harmonies. Harmony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they were amazing. The whole evening was amazing. Aww. And I, I wrote on our social media, if you follow us, one moment in the evening that was so special to me is Isabel Fox is the executive director. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I don't know if you want to make a joke about the table settings. She goes, all the decorations and decor and stuff we spent under $100 on because we recycled or things were donated. Yes. And it looked beautiful beautiful in there by the way yeah it absolutely did and she was like i just don't care i'd rather buy sutures or supplies and i was I like that's, that's indicative of what's important to this organization yes. and i love it mm -hmm. i love it it was it was just an incredible night so much money was raised so much more so great can happen i mean it was incredible i felt I love that i felt very lucky to be involved well, with what that. an honor i'm serious like that must have been very very special that you it got was. to host something like that it's fantastic and to see like host family there that put people up while they're having I was surgeries. reading about that on their website. The doctors that were honored. Mm -hmm. I'm like holy cow. These people are true true superheroes. Yeah. They really are. Mm -hmm. Dr. Cecilia Protas I met and started crying immediately. Mm. She is from Tanzania. There are 60 million people in that country. Whoa. She is the one and only ENT and pediatric no. surgeon. Nope. For the whole country. Uh-huh. So she's holy trying crap. to train people. She's here in the United States for three weeks. She was like her mom Mind was blown, you know. She had that beautiful accent. Yeah. I mean, she was gorgeous and she everything about her, she just oozed bright light wow. and loveliness. And I was like, You're literally saving lives every single day. I love that. Anyway, it was I could talk about it forever, but I won't. It was really, really no, amazing. It's outstanding. I did other things during the week, but I'm sure they weren't as important. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to see my TV son, Marcelo. Okay, so cute. That was such an adorable picture of you guys. <laughs> and he really does look like you. It's, I know, He it's looks crazy. like he could also be your child. I know. He looks more like my child than my child. <laughs> it's crazy. He's really cute. And he's so funny. He goes, he was, you know, sitting playing games and he said to his mama, hey, I'm going to go find his friend, whoever his friend mm -hmm. was. And she goes, I don't know, it's so crowded out there. And I said, yeah, I just went out there. Marcelo it is packed. I turned around and came back. And he looked at me and cocked his head and kind of squinted his eyes and he goes, I can take care of myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's just so cute. Oh my God. His family's love lovely. Anyway, it was just a wonderful time. That's amazing. Yeah. Exciting. Should we go ahead and get into our rants Let's for today? Let's do it. All right. You're up first. Okay. This is real fresh on the brain because it <laughs> happened before I got to Dana's today, y'all. <laughs> 
I don't even know where to start with this. I, I'm going to leave out some of the things that I witnessed in the waiting room today. Okay. Um, at the doctor's at office. At the doctor's office. Mm-hmm. So I really like my doctor, but wow, there's like five people in the practice. Plus they bring in specialists at different times during the week, which is great uh-huh. to like help instead of you having to go all over the city. It's like, oh, you need an allergist? They come here on Tuesday. Yeah, so that's it, wonderful. It's actually kind of awesome. And they're around the corner for me. So I'm grateful that I found a doctor I love and I'm getting referred to people. Yeah. So there's two women. <laughs> You're pulling out your face I already, already am. I know. <laughs> There's two women that are outside before I even get into the doctor. By Mm -hmm. the way, just you're probably already saying, well, what's the rant? The rant is etiquette at a doctor's office. Uh Let's just leave it at that. Okay. okay? Both waiting room and the office. Okay. Okay. So I see these two women kind of just, you know, fawning over these strollers. And I know that may seem like what's weird about that. Yeah, Jessica, (laughs) people can bring their children to the doctor. They don't have anyone to watch them. There's something (laughs) odd (laughs) about the amount of time they're and how much they're peeing peeking into the stroller and all that and I'm like whatever I'm waiting and then I'm like they're not moving I walk around them I go in I use the bathroom I come out they're now in the lobby and they're kind of blocking people they've now moved it inside they've got the strollers they're still peeking in they're talking to the baby like baby two strollers two uh-huh. it's two women they each have a stroller okay I go in I check into the door I sit down the next thing I know the door flies open and they're like can you help can somebody hold this they're already struggling and they're asking someone to hold the door so they can both come in with their strollers. Okay. So they come in and push in the strollers. Now, I will start with the fact that I assume these were grandparents. Okay. Oh, these okay. were older women. Oh, okay. But not really old, right? But right. Eh, t- mm, too old to be having a baby to unless they adopted. Bearing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They would not have been able to have a child at this age. Okay. So they come in with the strollers and I already see everybody kind of like look at them because it's just a weird vibe. Well, they're getting checked in and I'm staring at the strollers and then I hear a Meh. um the strollers each had dogs in them what yes at the doctor's office here they are this is what the- <laughs> so I'm like are they platonic housemates or are they two steps from gray gardens I'm not sure <laughs> I think they're both I need you to look at the dog Aww, okay doggy. but they're in baby strollers <laughs> They were talking to them like babies. And then what put me over the edge, and I even saw and heard a guy go, ha! Like, he was as outraged as me. The doctor's office is not the place to have doggies. Dana, they both, they called one of them back. They both got up with their strollers. They said, no, I'm sorry. I don't remember their names. They said, we called Cindy. You'll have to. She goes, no, we go in together. We always go in together. Oh, my. So Cindy and Melissa, that's what I've named them. <laughs> Um, Cindy and Melissa went in and brought the damn strollers with dogs in them. I'm actually livid with the doctor's office that they let them do that. It's not a service dog. It was not anything like that. I'm not being insensitive before anybody gets the wrong idea. Uh No, they were just in strollers. They didn't have They're maniacs that were treating their dogs like those women that get those dolls that look like (laughs) newborn babies. And I can't handle anything about any of it. Well, listen, I am an animal lover. And you know me. I talk every animal I talk like this to you. Mm -hmm. So, but I would never Never bring my pet into a doctor's Thank office. you. I often have a hard time. I know a lot of restaurants out here, cafes, with having their dogs out on the sidewalk and yes. stuff. I'm fine with that, but not in a restaurant. No. And that's only because not everyone's a dog lover. They're and not. there's sanitary issues. If you're talking about a doctor's office, that needs to be like in a... In a I love dogs. I don't want your dog or cat walking across the table where I'm then going to put a fork down on the table. Yeah, no, uh-uh. I'm sorry. No. You know why, Jessica? <laughs> Can I tell you why? Why? They walk through poop in their litter boxes yes. or out on the ground yes. and they have but- open buttholes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they don't wear panties like we do. <laughs> so I really am shocked that the doctor's office didn't say no. So am I. Okay, so I love the nurse, the main nurse for my general doctor, my GP. Uh-huh. Love her. She's so cool. I walk back there. She's like, hey girl, how are you? And I said, I'm good. She's like, what's going on? I'm like, get in there. Get in there. I like almost pushed her <laughs> to the waiting room. I shut the door behind me, which we never closed the door. I shut the door behind me. I said, I know you can't answer. I made sure I kept my voice low. I said, I know you can't answer or even acknowledge anything I'm about to say, but we need to talk about what's going on in your waiting room. (laughs) She goes, oh my God, are you talking about the women with the strollers? 
And I'm like, yes! We had the best conversation about it. And last, she did not divulge anything. She sure, couldn't. sure. I said, I just needed to know that I'm not crazy. I mean, I got validation from some other patients out there. <laughs> She goes, no, when me and doctor, <laughs> uh-huh. whenever they're here, she goes, I have to give him warning because he has to collect himself before he goes in to deal yeah, with them because like we can't handle in like it. like a force. Yes. They are a tag team. They're the wonder twins. I, I think people will agree with me. The dogs didn't need to be in strollers, let alone in the office. I will give a silver lining to my rant. Okay. At something that was super annoying. And then I was like, damn, that, that was really nice. There was somebody in there that was younger that was definitely tweaking. Okay, uh-huh. like it was unmistakable. Uh-huh. And he was kind of pacing and he reeked, and I mean like reeked of cigarettes uh-huh. beyond. And he was pacing back and forth, which already makes me nervous. And he's talking to the check-in people and he goes, they're like, I'm sorry, and we need your copay. We can't call you back there until you pay. And he goes, well, can't you just bill me for it? Uh-huh. And they're like, I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. He goes, well, they did that before. And they said, no, we don't do that. And he said, they did it last time. And they said, well, that was over a year ago. And we did that as a courtesy. Uh-huh. We can't do that again. I'm sorry. And he's like, well, I only have blah, blah, blah in cash. He kept saying that and i don't know if it was because he was being nice or i'm gonna be honest if it was just to shut him up but a patient in the waiting room stood up and paid for the guy's copay oh wow he was the same guy that was i clocked the dogs yeah that we were on the same page (laughs) about that wow but when i saw him do that i was like wow that was actually like really really nice really amazing so it was kind of a cool thing to witness yeah i've never seen anyone do i've it was just the whole thing was weird. There was a lot of other stuff that went on. I'm going to spare everyone the details. It was like Jim Rose Circus Sideshow from Lollapalooza <laughs> 1993 is what was going on in my doctor's waiting room this we morning. We've talked about don't bring your dogs places you shouldn't before. Okay. Like, oh, like the I home love, goods when uh-huh, they did the photo shoot. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love animals, but I know where it's appropriate mm-hmm. and not appropriate to take my animals. Yeah. You're going to bring her gonna... to a park. If you're having a picnic or yes. playing with your kid, you're not going to walk into a spa no. for a facial and put your dog there. get my there. nails done or the doctor. No, no, no. And okay. Ollie can ride in the car like Toons is the cat. Okay. But he can't <laughs> totally go into my dermatology appointment. Oh I mean, Does he ride in the car? Loves it. What? Of course he does. He sits up front for a minute and then he goes and sits straight up like kitty cat straight up on Henry's him. lap. Oh my God. <laughs> of course he loves it. And people, it. when we go up to stoplights, they double take. He is a not, dog in a cat's not body. Often you see a cat in a car. <laughs> no. He's a dog in a cat's body. He's so funny to me. Oh God. I love him. <laughs> That's amazing. Don't bring your pets. I Dear mean, God, do not bring them to the dog. Unless like, it's a service animal, like, of course. I'm not talking about that. Yes, of course. But like just wanting to have your dog with you because you love it. Sorry, don't go anywhere then. Yes. I'm not going to bring my lizard to a restaurant. Also, who makes an appointment? I'm sorry. Do you make appointments for any doctor at the same time as your husband or any girlfriend? No. Or if your sisters lived here, would you be like, let's, let's go, go to, to the, the doctor, doctor together, together and let's go in there together? No, you know That's you, weird. It's weird. You know what you do together? You get a facial. You get your <laughs> yes. nails done. Yes. You, you, you maybe go get your brows done since that's been heavy on the mind yes. lately. <laughs> I'll even allow a couple's massage for sisters or girlfriends. For sure. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. But you know what? When Why I'm did going they go to go in the room together, the exam room together with their dogs. Don't know. I don't want anybody. To, here's here's how it goes. I don't want anybody to see me weigh. Uh, I don't no. want anybody to be in there while I'm getting my blood pressure because it because it makes yes, me nervous. Yes, yes. I don't want somebody watching me put on that paper gown. No. And then I don't want them watching the doctor push around on my belly or my boobs. Okay. <laughs> I don't want There's anyone in there for anything, none of it. quite frankly. There's none of it I want somebody in there for. Unless my doctor was going to be like, you're the perfect picture of health for the world. <laughs> then I'd want you all in there. But that's never going to happen. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, uh, I, I can't. Even in that situation, even I think that I would not be like, hi. I think no. I would have been appalled. <laughs> yes, I was angry. Like, actually angry. I, that would have been a situation where I couldn't help myself from going is this a joke Mm -hmm. out loud i did that to somebody at a coffee shop the other day and his friend made him walk out because he was having a full-blown conversation on speakerphone in a coffee shop that's so obnoxious across the table from me i had my computer out they were already writing together and doing bits and pitching things 
super loud, which I'm like, listen, I was in Sunday company. I get Mm -hmm. it. You got to write somewhere. Mm -hmm. You need to be out and be be inspired. But like take into consideration where you are. Yeah. This guy had no concept. I can't. And I literally looked straight at his face and I go, is this a joke right now? (laughs) My friend was mortified. I love that you did that. And she was like, and I go, no, I'm not kidding. I do that sometimes now. Is he kidding himself into thinking he's the only, we all have computers out. What is he doing? He needs to go outside. And then his friend touched him on the arm and told him go outside. (laughs) Good. And the guy that was sitting next to me. And the friend should have said what you said to begin with. (laughs) I know. The guy sitting next to me was like, thank you for doing that. That was crazy. Yes. (laughs) That's the one good thing about this. Again, when you at least know with a stranger, you're like, okay, cool. (laughs) All right. We're on the same page here. Yeah. I've I've, somebody else. I've definitely been the crazy person that thought she had throngs of supporters (laughs) and no one would look at me. (laughs) Yep. So it works both ways. (laughs) Totally. But also sometimes people totally agree. They just don't want don't to be say part anything. of it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or they're like, okay, and they just try to tune it out. I can't. Yeah. The older I get, the worse I get. Yeah. It's like <laughs> my you, tolerance. Whatever for that bullshit filter is, is nil. it wears away as you get older. Yeah. I'm I'm getting and I already didn't have a lot of filter. So <laughs> it's wearing very thick. I have just like barely a screen door with holes in it right now. <laughs> but I respect that you will say it. Once in a while I will, but more of the time it's a lot of very haughty, <sighs> loud passive sighs, aggressive. very passive aggressive. Like <laughs> I'll just keep sighing and guffawing louder and louder and saying, are you kidding me? And looking around and all of I that I cut straight to it. He needs to grow outside. <laughs> I love it. I literally, I think of myself as this, like, I don't know, I guess I still feel like I'm in my 30s, even though I'm clearly yeah, not. Yeah, me too. But I act like an old woman. <laughs> Is this a joke? That young man needs to go outside. His mama should have taught him better. Like, I act like an old person I, that can't handle I anything. I the same way. <laughs> I just don't know what happened. It's I feel like overnight, boom. Yeah. Within the last year, I'm just my... like I feel my age, and I haven't yes. until this year. I don't know what happened. Yeah, it hits you in in the <laughs> in the whole body, in the brain, in the body. Uh-huh. <laughs> my friend keeps calling me out for it too. She looks at me really wide eyed, and she goes, "Okay, Aunt Jessica. Okay, okay, Aunt I support Jessica. Aunt Jessica." <laughs> I support Aunt Jessica. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, what don't do you? Bring your dogs. Don't. I brought. A... What do you have to so, rant about? <laughs> I have a rant from a listener. Great. And I love this one because I think we can all kind of relate. Mm-hmm. I think this happens to everybody sometimes and it's not fair. Okay, here we go. Here is my rant. I rarely do anything nice for myself because I'm busy and I have children who require every last shred of my brain function. (laughs) I'm telling you, even if you have one child, it takes a multiple children. I mean, you barely have anything left, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So she says, so on the very rare occasion that I get my brows waxed or I get a tattoo or get a massage and someone, (coughs) my mom, (coughs) finds out, they always enter with a, must be nice. She typed out, excuse me? <laughs> I love it. Did you clean up vomit out of your favorite wool sweater because the baby threw up on you at seven in the morning? That was real nice. God forbid I take 20 minutes to myself and get my hair trimmed. Why must people think their lives are so hard that someone actually doing a nice thing for themselves isn't fair to you, an adult? I'm not sure if any of that makes sense, but in conclusion, the phrase must be nice is a dick move and 2020 has no room for it. Right? Agreed. I totally agree. Agreed. People need to do nice things for Mm -hmm. themselves. And I'm sorry I'm going to say it, especially mommies. Yes. Because you can go crazy. (laughs) I remember when a friend asked me to, it was like the first time a friend that lived out here had a baby. And I was like, yeah, what do you need? They're like, can you come over? I'm like, yeah, what do you need me to do? Whatever, I'm free. I just 
need to take a shower. A shower. Mm-hmm. I had a, <laughs> I had a very good friend, this friend of mine, Sherry, that she was in a college course mm-hmm. where she had to do an active service for part of her program, and she asked if she could help me, and I was Aww. like, "What?" She was like, "I was wondering if I could come over once or twice a week and just give you a little four hour break. Amazing. I can help you do laundry. You can take a shower." I literally bawled every time she came <laughs> over because I just wanted to shower. Yeah, yeah. Like, I smelled like sour milk and vomit, yep. you know. <laughs> Totally. And it was so, I didn't want to go, you know, get some fancy thing done totally. or go shopping or, you know, that wasn't my thing. But I will say, if that is your thing and that go makes you feel it. better, go do it. Yes. Because you deserve it. It is hard work for mommies and daddies. Mm-hmm. I would say anybody. Absolutely. And then if you don't have children, everybody's lives are crazy now. Mm-hmm. It is so important. I know people are sick of hearing self-care, but if you're not healthy, then the people around you hundred percent are not going to be because you can't give them what they need. Yes. You know what I mean? Especially like your children or your family or your spouse. A hundred percent. Your partner. When I was in college one summer, I babysat for a family for exactly the reasons you just said. She had me twice a week for four hours at a time to do two things, grocery shop and go to the gym. Yep. She goes, you don't understand what this means. A, that I, she said, getting to go to a gym twice a week, like I get to work out a lot of my stuff, you know? Yeah. And she said to be able to grocery shop without oh my God. two children under the age of three, she goes, you don't understand what it means to me. It literally takes five times as long yeah. to grocery shop with yes. a child. Yes. <laughs> Even a good child. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? That doesn't, you're just trying to haul them around and mm-hmm. keep them busy. And yes. Make sure they're not putting extra things in the car. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so just a lot. But I think it's good for anyone to do something for themselves. Absolutely. We deserve it. We're all doing the best we can. Mm-hmm. And I wish I knew where this person was from because to have the well, must be nice sounds like such a Midwest. <laughs> like, I have heard that in my f- extended family mm-hmm. and, and immediate family so many times. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I think that is jealousy. Mm-hmm. that they're not taking the time to do for them yes. either. And again, that's an example of mm-hmm. you're not taking care of yourself and it's coming out on somebody else. Right. That's and there's nothing think. bougie about wanting to feel nice when it has something to do with your appearance. Oh, gosh. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, no. I'm mortified that I have not had my hair done and too long to even admit that is a big deal. When I do that, which will be sometime very soon, I will feel so, so good. good. <laughs> it's one little thing, but yep. it makes you feel great. Absolutely. It makes you feel great. Same with your Getting nails. Getting your nails done. I know. I'm sorry. Agreed. You don't want me to do my own nails. I did my own nails for years and years and they always looked horrible. Uh, it looks like James Caan in Misery. <laughs> That's what mine look like. Okay. <laughs> so let's it's not important. ever do that again. Listen, I'm not saying if you don't have the money to go do something, like don't rob a bank to do it. Right. But find something else you can do. Like yeah. a lot of times community centers have free yoga classes, yes. things like that. Anything that makes you feel good. Totally. If you can't afford to go get your nails done or your hair done or whatever, mm-hmm. go to the freaking mall, buy like a mini eyeshadow and yes. have them give you a makeover. Yes. <laughs> Ser- that also makes you feel like a million bucks. Absolutely. And, then- and sometimes a friend can do it. Like I have a friend who's great at doing nails and she always gets what she's like, I don't get it. She goes, it's not like some random person and it would be weird if you took me up on it. So many times she's offered, like if she's just overhanging out, she goes, you want me to paint your nails? I'm like, no. Why, Because Jessica? I'm mortified because I'm always like my cuticles and oh my, my nails God, and whatever. Oh my God, you like my mom. And she rolls her eyes. She's like, okay, it'll take me like five minutes. And she's good. She does it to herself. Yeah. You need to take her up on it. That's also just like bonding time. You can talk and laugh and Mm -hmm. what? No, I'm just like your eyelids lowered at me and you went "Mm -hmm." (laughs) back to sling blade. (laughs) No, I'm just recalling that I actually have a gift certificate to nail garden that I haven't used. Jessica, I know, I know, I know. Also, that's good to keep in mind, too, when you're thinking about friends who are having a hard time or maybe someone who has children or such a good gift such a good gift any kind of spa related yes. thing because it's something we do feel guilty spending money on ourselves for totally um talk to your friends see what are like the cheap places that can kind of like i go to face house here in la mm-hmm. which is it's for facials mm-hmm. but it's not in a private room you don't take your clothes is it in off silver lake los feliz there's one there there's one in west hollywood and there's one here on ventura 
uh, okay. in Studio City, not far from here. Oh. And what you do is you make an appointment, you go in, and all of the chairs are out in the same room. Yep. So it's not like you don't take no, your clothes exactly. off or whatever. But because of that, it's much cheaper than going to a spa and yes. having a $200 fee. Like, who can do that all the time? Certainly not me. No. And I think it's like, depending on what you get, ranging yeah. from 40 to 60 bucks or whatever. And it's about 45 minutes. I mean, it's just... My friend told me about that place. Zone out. Yep. And then you walk out and you're like, I look so young. <laughs> and it's great. <laughs> I want to go. I want to go right now. That's something we could do together, Jessica. Yes. Self-care. That's right. We deserve it. You know what? We all do. Here's a challenge. 2020 don't got no room for no self self (laughs) care. Okay. Okay. And 2020 don't got no room for must be nice. Mm -hmm. 2020 only has room for it is nice. (laughs) So I am challenging all of you listening this week or next Find something you want to do. I don't care if it's go to a museum. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's download your favorite new artist's album. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Do something nice for yourself and then tell us about it. Yeah. We want to rally you on. Seriously, that's a great idea. Do something good for yourself. Do it. And again, there are ways to do stuff that are really cool and enriching that really don't have to cost you a dime. Every We've talked about it before. Museums, yep. once a month, usually have a free day. Yep. I don't care if you want to go for a walk in a park. Mm. I don't know. It's cold everywhere right now, I guess. Yeah, I but, love it. But whatever it is for you, if you're like, mm-hmm. I haven't had potato soup in three years, go get you some potato yes. soup. Or make some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to the girl that brings Taco Bell tacos to the Super Bowl party. I know. My friend just said to me when she was over this week, and she goes, why do you have so many cookbooks when you hate Don't cooking? Cook. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Everybody has to have something they like to collect, Jessica. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, you would think that I was trained at the Sorbonne, and I'm... I don't know what that means. It's like a... <laughs> Famous Culinary Institute. Oh, like uh, Cordon Bleu? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, well, let's do a cleansing breath. We like let's to get all it. of our rants out. All your dumb dogs at the doctor, all you people hating on others for being nice to themselves. We, we're mad about it. We got it out. Uh-huh. And we're going to fix it. <laughs> so let's take a cleansing breath, get it out, and fill mm-hmm. up with some goodness. Let's do it. If you're by yourself, scream it out. If not... Scream it out anyway. I don't yeah. care. It's 2020. Mm-hmm. Just don't do it right in someone's ear. Well, don't get arrested either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, breathe in. And ah. <sighs> Great job. Mm-hmm. I When I listen back to this, I'm definitely going to make sure it didn't sound very snotty when I breathed <laughs> in because I felt like I heard like... <laughs> Not at all. (laughs) Okay, so we're moving into corners. Mm -hmm. You are up first, I think, with corners. All right. So this this is really (laughs) also something. Our corners are always something. They're always something. This this I feel like is uh, parallel to Papa John. Oh, my God, yes. We all know he's a mess. Man eats dog food for 30 days to prove that it's good enough for dogs. Nope. (laughs) <laughs> Not to prove that it's good enough for humans. No. That it's good enough for dogs. <laughs> yeah. Makes no sense. Can I? Really hope he's not the CEO of Old Roy. Oh, huh. The company that makes the dog food for Walmart. Oh. Okay. A dog food company CEO ate nothing but canine chow for a whole month (laughs) to show that if it was good enough for him, it was good enough for dogs too. If that makes any sense. (laughs) Mitch Felderhoff, president of Texas-based Munster Milling, ate (sighs) nothing but dog food made by his company for 30 days from January 3rd to February 2nd. Ugh. Munster Milling produces high-quality dog foods and treats, horse food, chicken feed, and the executive wanted to demonstrate the quality of the dog food by eating it himself for a month. It wasn't the easiest thing in the world to do, he admits, but he found the strength to stick to the diet for the full 30 days. Okay, it also isn't the craziest thing a person can do, but it's real crazy. (laughs) I want to know, are we talking about dry kibble? I doubt it. he then had to chew, or is this like... Oh, I bet it was a wet food, and I'll tell you why. 
because I just bought these fancy wet foods for Lucy. I like mm-hmm. to give her, you know. Caesar? Well, I did give her Caesar <laughs> one time, but this was Nutro. Mm-hmm. And this is chicken and vegetables. Mm-hmm. And they I don't buy her lamb because you know my issues. Mm-hmm. But anyway, <laughs> I opened that stuff up and I'm not joking. It smelled good. It smells duh. Delicious. But I was is this like, like a fan? I mean, I don't mean this in a bad way, fans. Is this one of the better dog food companies? I think so. And it's supposed to be real healthy. Yeah. Like some of them are garbage, like literally all Roy news flash. <laughs> My vet was like, don't ever give your dog that. He said it is actual garbage. He said, absolutely not. He went nuts. And he wasn't even trying to get, he's like, if you can't afford science diet, which is what we have here, he goes, Mm -hmm. fine, but I'll give you some brands. He goes, you can't give your dog that. Yeah. This has like actual peas in it and stuff Yeah, in in chunks of stuff. Like it smells. Are you trying to tell me that you ate it? I haven't yet. Did you taste it, Dana? No. Are you sure? (laughs) Not yet. Do you have something to tell us? No, not yet. (laughs) But I got to tell you, I was sniffing it and I was like, oh, it smells so good. I was like, this dog's eating better than I do. (laughs) Yes. I ate dried cat food once. It was on a counter. But why? Didn't know that people's cats jumped on the counter or that they left food for their cats on the counter. It just looked like some kind of Chex mix. And I took a... Was it in a bowl? Yeah, I'm like, ew. I'm like, it's kind of nasty. Was it in a bowl? It was in like a dish. Oh, okay. So you just thought it was like, oh, Yeah, treats. it wasn't in a bowl with like a bone. Well, and I thought a, you meant it was just like that said, on bow, the wow. table. Like <laughs> they had spilled some and you were like, nope, oh, better eat that. <laughs> no, it was in like a little dish on the counter. Oh my God. But like what has been said or done in reference to your company that you feel the need to eat it to prove it's okay? I don't know. And I'll tell you something. Two weeks ago, I was at a baby shower and one of the games from the shower was guess the food Uh which i thought that's cute that's fun no it wasn't okay (laughs) and i only say this because i'm so sensitive to smell Uh so of course i'm like well how bad can it taste it's pureed veggies and fruit right but i've never tried baby food i Uh haven't Uh um the first one that they opened was orange so i assumed it's gonna be like butternut squash or or carrots carrots. yeah i smelled it i dry heaved (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it literally smelled like rotting blue cheese. Ew. Everybody's like shocked at my reaction. I passed it around the table. Everybody else went mm, and did that wince was where they bad? jerked their head back. Did it? The best part was it got to the mommy to be and she took a smell. She goes, mm, that smells good. Ew. <laughs> That's like, girl, I think your hormones are like off the something's charts. R- something's not working right. Dana, it was peaches. Oh. That's what was so disturbing to me. I'm like, there better be some kind of Limburger cheese mixed in with these vegetables <laughs> for it to smell like that. And when they revealed what it was, they're like, peaches. No, somebody swapped bottles somewhere. So it smelled so bad to me that I couldn't, I never tasted any of them, including that, because I'm real sensitive to smell. And I was like, nope. I, I don't like games like that anyway. Yeah, I just it's couldn't do it. Yuck. Yuck. I wouldn't be able to do it. And I also don't like that diaper game. Where they put different candy bars in it and you have to guess. You sniff what? it. You sniff it and you can lick it, but it looks like poo-poo in a diaper. Okay. Like a baby Ruth or uh-huh. an almond uh-huh. joint. Nope. <laughs> nope. And what oh, kind of nope. poo-poo is this? What kind of poo-poo is this? You win a pencil. Oh my God. <laughs> I do want to give a quick aside because one of the ladies who hosted the shower is a listener of our podcast. Oh, did I insult? No. Oh, okay. I hope I didn't insult. <laughs> it was one of the most beautiful, lovely showers I've ever been to. So please don't think I'm slamming the games. I'm just sensitive <laughs> to smells and I could not handle that baby food. Okay. Ooh, I also, I don't like forced fun, so I have issues. <laughs> I actually like it. There was also an amazing game that was guess what ch- like famous children's book it was based on emojis. Oh, and I was fun. like, I was like, I'm going to get this because I know things. emojis and I love kids books. Nope. I got like They're four hard. of them. It was hard. I played an emoji game at a baby shower and it was hard. And I'm so competitive. It's, Me ha- too. it's tough. I was like disappointed. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, go, how did I not know that's that? That's not what it means. I'll tell you why. And I, <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants, everybody's here like, Dana, shut up. We're here to celebrate a baby. I know. I'm like, that's not a caterpillar. It looks like a baguette. <laughs> I want that pair of earrings they're giving away. <laughs> 
I won something from one of the games. Really? I won a Starbucks gift card, yo. <gasps> wow. That is the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, man. I'm serious. That's I awesome. I love me a Starbucks gift card. Wow. Oh, I meant to tell you, at the Mending Kids Gala, Paul Mitchell Systems was one of the sponsors. Nice. They give us a giant bag of a bunch of products. How happy are you? I love That's it. That's amazing shampoo. I can yes. smell it in my Aw- mind's Aw- eye. Aupani? Aupuni? Yeah, Awapuhi. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love Paul Mitchell from back in the day. <laughs> <sighs> okay, don't eat your own dog food. Moving on. <laughs> I'm getting better at transitions, right? From Paul Mitchell to Garnier Fructis. <laughs> that's, that's where we are. <laughs> and don't eat Oroy dog food either. No. Yeah. And it is ol, O-L apostrophe. Yeah, I assumed, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. Oroy. <laughs> yeah. I have a very special corner. Okay. <laughs> This is a new corner, guys. So, brrr, drum roll. This corner is called Oh Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> and it's my oh, corner man. because I just want to hear you tell the story again. So, you have to tell it mm-hmm. so that I can sit back and laugh at you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is there a song? Uh, <clears throat> is there a song with Jessica in it? Oh my God. Actually, no. The one song named Jessica is an all instrumental song by the Allman Brothers. Oh, interesting. It goes That's going to sound as good as you trying to do Hotel California, <laughs> which sounded I, nothing like it. I take umbrage. It did too. Take also, umbrage. Yes. What does that mean? It means that I disagree with you and I am offended. It sounded like Hotel California, and guess what? I didn't air guitar when I sang like you just did right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play you one second or two. You'll recognize it. Just Will I? So far, it sounds like the opening to Charlie Brown. <laughs> Anybody? Jessica by the Allman Brothers? Anybody? The concert I stayed out at all night and Anybody? didn't come home, and my mom didn't speak to me the next day, which was on my birthday. And admittedly, it was because I defied my curfew. And um... I was like, my mom's like, you better, like, through gritted teeth. She's like, I suggest you get home immediately. Because that my curfew was, like, 11. I called her at midnight. I was already an hour. Jessica. Uh-huh. And I lied and said I was at a gas station somewhere and that my friend's car broke down. All lies. Ugh. And my mom's like, you better get. And I'm like, well, I'm not gonna. How old were you? Um, Like, 20. Oh. I was, like, home for the summer. Yeah. I mean, when you're living for free under your parents' roof, you yeah. gotta abide by their I rules, know, Jessica. I know. But it was from an Almond Brothers show. Oh, buddy. I may or may not have partaken in a lot of different things that evening. Like what? Uh, just hot things. dogs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ate too many hot dogs. Too many tater tots. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but yes, so, that is the only song, as far as I know, that's my namesake. Even though I am in Lou Big as Mamba Mambo Number Five. Yeah. Jessica in my life. Uh-huh. A little the bit of Tina, Tina, here I am. Or I think it's a little bit of Jessica, here I am. Yeah. That's it. Is wah, there a song wah, about Tina? <laughs> I know that song. When it's playing, I can oh, usually sing God. all the words. That sounds pretty much like it. Is there a song named after you? No. There was on a TV show once where a guy wrote a song for a girl named Dana and it oh. just went, Dana! I love you, Dana. One chord. That's all I've ever heard that I know of. My sister's name is Denise, mm-hmm. but we use the song Denise. <laughs> we just say Denise. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Anyway, we're off track here. Sorry. Jessica? <laughs> yes. Would you like to tell people why I created oh, the corner? Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, wow. Jessica. Mm-hmm. I really went off track. Okay. <laughs> So last night my friend was texting me from home and she said, (laughs) I'm really freaked out. And I said, why? And (laughs) she said, "Um, hold on. And she sent me a picture. And I said, what is going on? I'm trying to pull up said picture right now. I said, what is going on? Is your husband home? (laughs) You're messing with me. And she said, no, I'm not. Did you see the pic? 
it's something with the Earth's axis. And I said, I don't understand. And then I see a picture of her broom standing in straight her kitchen. up on its bristles. Yes. Standing straight up. She's nowhere near it. Yep. Yeah. And I said, you pulled your broom out and let go of it to see if it would stand up on its own. And she said, yes, and it won't fall over. And then I started getting freaked out. And I said, why did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> because it's been a full moon. Yep. Yeah. And I said, I feel like you're messing with me right now. And then I wrote, stop it right now. Oh, my God. And I tried it in my own kitchen, and it also (laughs) happened. And there's the picture of your broom. (laughs) You're going to have to post these pictures. And she said, I told you, Jessica, I'm scared. (laughs) And she was not kidding. So I said, well, it works at my place, too. We're all going to be fine, okay? (laughs) But admittedly, I was, like, really freaked out by it i didn't uh-huh. think it was i don't know what i thought it was it Why was would weird it specifically only be brooms I, well that was part of it too but i was like i don't know so i was watching the local news <laughs> my several hours after this happened by the way i also took a video of it in case people didn't believe me good for you Cover to all prove your that my possessed broom stood up on its own <laughs> around here it is, all over oh the world god. they're just standing up oh god i am mickey i am the sorcerer's <laughs> apprentice oh my god. so it was on the local news and i about lost my damn mind because you know how they're like <laughs> they've like just talked about a tragedy and then they're like <laughs> now we're gonna talk about something that went viral today uh there was a video circulating about brooms standing up on their own it has nothing to do with the moon or the gravitational pull of it it will happen anytime anywhere you try to stand a broom up on its own i lost my mind girlfriend yes got yourselves worked into such a tizzy yes texting back and forth freaking you out like, and all where's caps. your husband yes <laughs> and my husband wasn't home either i was like clutching my pearls what is happening is this the my movie bag, my pearls Ooh. is m night Shyamalan filming a sequel to signs because <laughs> something is happening right now in valley village what is happening (laughs) oh my god i'm losing it Uh, and the only reason it is so hilarious to me is i would absolutely do the same thing right i know i would if you guys had texted me i would have gotten all of my brooms out (laughs) i would have had four brooms in the middle of my kitchen I have to tell you the best part about this that makes it even more embarrassing that I was equally spooked. Um, <laughs> I first did it and the broom almost fell out and I kept catching it. It was I had to work at getting it to stand up. You understand? <coughs> but instead of being like, cool, I did it. I was like, oh, it, 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 there is something going on with the moon. It, there was a full moon last night. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't. <laughs> I would do the exact same thing. I, I mean, know it. I can't. <laughs> oh, Jessica. <laughs> For what a skeptic I am about so many things. I you sure believe the broom in, was. You got sucked into the moon fantasia. For real. <laughs> Has something to do with the gravitational pull of the Earth's axis. Give me a break. <laughs> well, now you want to get a break, but last night you were pulling your broom out. <laughs> Oh God! Well, you know what? While we're on this corner, guys, don't don't you fret, because I have one more thing to add, which is also um, for Dana's. Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know what the right word is. Um, this is a corrections corner. Oh yeah, something yes. that. Remember we talked about <laughs> when Dana brought up the man who was given a DIY chastity, chastity belt. belt from his wife and i went nuts and it was a nut (laughs) pun intended Uh because i said no i think you're mistaken dana maybe the lug nuts or the screws went around things that were bolted she slid his darn in the center of that and i said ain't no way Mm -hmm. well yes there is (laughs) (laughs) thank you to our listener Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I love her so much. I found pics of the Ukraine guy whose wife bolted his wing ding. <laughs> Dana was right. 
I found a pic of the bolt post removal. Can we post that? Uh, yeah, we're going to oh, post okay, it. Good, I don't good, know good. why I can't open it up. <laughs> Anyways. And then she wrote, how did he not wake up when she put that on him? Yeah, because he came home all sloshed after having a good yeah. night with his other lady. They've blurred out his thingy. Wing ding, as she called it. But right next to it, you do see, and it is a large bolt yes, not yeah. a bolt lug nut, lug nut the thing that screws on the bolt uh-huh. so yeah i i eat my hat i mean what next <laughs> you know, first it was I chinese love, food now it's hardware i just love that she looked it up so do i, I and am. she even said i don't know why but i didn't even think twice about looking it up and i said <laughs> i love that you did that and I love that you sent it to us. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> if you guys ever find stuff like that, yes. please send it to us. Uh, that made me laugh it's so hard. It's amazing. So. so sorry to the cheater in the Ukraine, but he won't be doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, maybe grounds for divorce. But, you know, listen, potato, potato. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> okay, we should move on into our race. Let's do it. You're up first. Okay, so I have a favorite local bakery. Doesn't everybody? Yes, Portis. <laughs> oh, God, yes. <laughs> no, but I love this place. It's a neighborhood favorite. And anytime I bring it somewhere, people are like, where did you get this? So I'm always like trying to send people their way because mm-hmm. everybody that works there is really nice. That goes a long way with me. But sure. their stuff is great and always a crowd pleaser. So when I was at the bakery on Sunday, I went in to get some Oscar cupcakes from mm-hmm. them. I will post a picture of that. They're really impressive I noticed a sign that they had up about their sweetheart cake. And I even asked the guy, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm not going to get it now, but what is this? And I see hashtag food is love. February 1st through 29th, 2020. Every time you order the sweetheart cake, $5 goes toward feeding hungry seniors. So their particular organization locally that they're giving money to is St. Vincent Meals on Wheels. Now, Meals on Wheels is something I've heard about forever Ever, yeah that's like a tried and true old school charity that's great Mm -hmm. i have a friend who does something similar so also again when we're looking at ways we can help or do things she volunteers to pick up food from places like bristol farms in particular in la donates all of their stuff that's gonna get close to a sell-by date she picks up the food and then she drives it to a specific women's shelter where the food is then oh amazing shared with women who are being temporarily housed and things like that and bristol firms for those of you outside of california is like an insane i mean i wish i could have shopped there it's a once in a blue moon thing Mm -hmm. it's real fancy they make incredible stuff it's you know. I feel like the only time I've had Bristol Farms is like in a basket for a Christmas gift. <laughs> yeah. It's like super gourmet. Most yeah. of their stuff is organic. It's uh, their bakery is off the chart. There's yeah. nothing bad there. Okay. Everything is good. So this hashtag food is love thing. Look it up, please. And follow it and see what may be going on in your community. Because there are a lot of organizations I saw within LA that are part of this. So like if you go to Sage, which is a vegan restaurant in Culver City, Sage is giving a portion of proceeds also to an organization. The restaurants that are participating in it for Food is Love are giving part of their profits to a charitable organization. So I love it. Absolutely love it. So we're spreading the word on Food is Love. Food is Love, guys. Also, Meals on Wheels. Check that out in your area. I'll give you a brief thing about Meals on Wheels if you don't know. Right here in Los Angeles, and again, this is just our chapter, over 250,000 seniors are at risk for hunger. We serve as the safety net for many of those seniors who are hungry and homebound. Love so it. again, people that can't leave, right? Yes. These amazing LA restaurants designated a dish for the Food is Love campaign. Each time you order the designated badge dish, proceeds go to, towards feeding hungry seniors. It allows you to find a location. It shows, you know, Salt's Cure. That's an amazing restaurant. Terranea, an incredible resort in Palos Verdes. Blue Jam Cafe. Oh, um, I know Blue Jam. Yeah. That's the only thing I know that you've said so far. <laughs> And they're looking for volunteers. The following positions are open. Home delivered grocery assembler. Mm. So that's probably packing up their stuff from Mm -hmm. a center where they store the food. Runners, kitchen aides, and drivers. 
Yeah. So that's an amazing thing to do and to give your time if once a month or once a week, you know, on Sunday mornings is the perfect time you can do that or whatever. Mm -hmm. The the seniors. That's fantastic. Our seniors are (laughs) often forgotten and we can't let that happen. Totally. I love that. All kinds of events coming up for them. So definitely check out hashtag food is love. Hashtag food is love. Awesome. Oh, and Big Sugar, if I didn't say, Big Sugar Bake Shop is where you can get the sweetheart cake. It's, oh, cool. Their cakes are so good. Oh, boy, just when yeah. I need more cake. Yeah, I know. It's my fave. <laughs> I love it, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for my rave this week, I brought an organization called Young at Heart Chorus. Mm. You can check them out at youngatheartchorus.com. And I actually found them on Facebook. It was just like, nice. I told you guys I'm trying to fill my feeds with like uplifting good yes. stories and stuff. And this was something I ran across there. Right. What started out in 1982 at a Western Massachusetts elderly housing project mm. to joyfully pass the time instead of passing before your time has developed into the stereotype defying generation crossing musical extravaganza, better known as the Young at Heart Chorus. From the New York Times to Time, The Ellen Show, The Daily Show, and stars of hit Fox Searchlight documentary, Young at Heart, this group of seniors ranging in age from 73 to 92, has performed from Northampton to New Zealand, Europe, to Japan, on over 30 international tours, proving it's possible to grow old without growing boring. Also, I wanted to tell you, I mentioned this to you in the Mm -hmm. green room dump, I think, they also had a Super Bowl commercial. Yeah. So it was E-Trade's popular This Is Getting Old ad. The vocals in the background were done by the Young at Heart I Chorus. I love it. And they're all these elderly people that are so adorable mm-hmm. and so happy and still finding joy in life. And I think this is a reason why. Yes. When you have something you enjoy, it keeps you alive. 100%. They also do, they have an annual mashup series where they pair the Young at Heart Chorus with some of the nation's best, best youth Stop choirs. Stop it. How cute is that picture? Isn't it so cute? <laughs> they have done with the Chicago Children's Choir, Brooklyn Youth Chorus, SciTech Band. It's just amazing. Check them out. They've been going for 38 years. Wow. It's incredible. People, have, David Byrne said, deeply moving, sometimes hilarious, and always wonderful. Oh, Their mission is Young at Heart Chorus strives to present a positive image of aging through music born of a belief that the often marginalized elderly Mm -hmm. can make great contributions to art. We perform songs not commonly sung by older people to build bridges between communities and create shared musical experiences for young and old alike. Young at Heart works to show that age is never a barrier to making great music and that no life circumstance should act as a barrier to participating in or enjoying it. Young at Heart Chorus is a registered 501c3 nonprofit organization. So you can donate to them. There's all kinds of other information. I may try and find a video and play us out a little bit with them singing. They're just absolutely, it's pure joy. It's pure joy. I look look at them in their black turtle nets and sunglasses. And their glasses. They're so So cute. cute. So anyway, again, that's youngatheartchorus.com. Check them out. They're pretty darn cool. And since I'm on the road to elderly, you know, it's something that, I don't know, I feel like we sing a lot on the show. Okay, maybe we'll bring a a little bit of the Sweeney sisters. (laughs) Open a chapter here in L.A. for me and Jessica. Sweet Abadiba, San Bernardino. It does it. It does it. Da, 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 you get your kicks on Route 66. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe let's start a middle aged at heart chorus. Okay, <laughs> sign me up. Oh man, Jessica <laughs> Dana, I think that's our I show. I can't believe it, but I think it is. <laughs> it's a long episode, and it took us four hours to even start recording. Okay. <laughs> Jessica, you want to tell everybody how they can find us? Yes, please continue to follow, comment, DM on Facebook and Instagram at the Rants and Raves podcast on Twitter at raves underscore the at our email, the Rants and Raves podcast at gmail.com and through the contact button on our website, www.therantsandravespodcast.com. Yay! Thank you again to Jessica you, for Dana. all of the tears and laughter today. Aww, likewise. <laughs> and you guys know I love to leave you with a weekly point to mm-hmm. ponder, something that you can enjoy on Instagram or social media, yes. a video to watch, something. Sometimes it's just a conversation starter and yeah. a fact. So I just have a quick fact for you guys. You may want to use it as a conversation starter <laughs> and also let you know we'll be back next week. Uh, hey, everybody. Kangaroos. <laughs> 
<laughs> Female kangaroos have three vaginas. All right, guys. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Like the river I've been running ever since. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know. Oh.